Hey, I want to show you a trick that I use with devices like the Basil Castle that use patch wires. Before I start, be aware that I have no idea what I'm talking about, so do anything I say at your own risk. Most modular devices use these patch cables, these little 1 8 inch cables. But some, like the Basil Castle, use these patch wires like you'd use on a breadboard. So like, for example, on the castle drum here, I connect a patch wire to trigger in, and it makes a drum sound. The castle has this little I.O. port so that you can port two uh, CV values in or out to a stereo cable. But what if you run out of ports? Or what if you're using something that doesn't have a little I.O. port like this has? Like what if you're just using an actual breadboard? Well, here's the trick that I use to get around that. I use these alligator clips. You can get these at uh, anywhere that sells electronics. I would suggest looking for a college and seeing where the electrical engineering students buy their electronics stuff from. All you have to do is take the patch wire, plug it in, and connect the patch wire to the tip of the patch cable using the alligator clip. Now, when you do this, you're not done yet because you also have to bridge the ground. See, these patch cables, you notice there's a little black ring here? Well, the tip is the signal, but the base is the ground. Modular uses voltages to describe values, but there's not really any such thing as an absolute voltage. Like there's no such thing as three volts. There's only the differences between two voltages. So unless you know where zero is, you don't know what any one value means. So the way we do that is we take the ground wire and we attach it to something that is ground. If you're using something like an Arduino, there should be an actual GND on your data sheet somewhere. If you're using the castle, you'll notice that it's got like a little minus marked on one of the ports. So in the case of the castle, what you do is you connect the minus to the ground. And then you're ready to take your signal and connect it to the port you're interested in. You can do this with as many ports as you want. And after the first one for a particular device, you don't have to hook up the ground anymore. You only have to hook up the ground once. All you have to do is get the two devices on a common ground and that's good enough. So let's connect this to the drum modulation. Now we've got the SQ1 sequencing the drum castle without having to go through the IO ports. So that's with a mono cable. If you've got a stereo cable, it works just a little different. The back here is still the ground, but the space in between the two rings, because see there's two rings on a stereo cable, the space in between is your right output, and the tip is your left input. If you have two patch wire based devices, like say two castles, then it's even a little bit easier. In this case, you don't need to worry about the patch cable, and all you need to do is make a connection between a ground on one device and a ground on the other device. In this case, connecting the two minus symbols. Now the two devices are on a common ground, and we can just hook up whatever we want, like say 